On this week's show, Peloton officially announces a new corporate wellness program. And are we getting the first UK tread instructor? And much, much more. Welcome to Pelo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. Here are your hosts, Amanda Siegel and John Pruitt. Welcome to episode 43 of Pedal Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. I'm Amanda Siegel and I'm joined by my co-host John Pruitt. Hey John. Hey, hey now, what's up Amanda? Yeah, good to be back. Another busy week. Um, oh, what, a, what a much better week this week. I am back on the bike back on the floor and um, I feel awesome. So I'm so, so pleased. I really missed working out. It's an amazing, never in a million bazillion years would I say that I missed working out, but I missed working out. Uh, you know, I missed, I missed my friends, I missed my instructors, um, I missed working out. So um, it feels good to be back. And it's amazing when you listen to your body, you know, you hear these instructors talk about it, right? And they talk about how you just gotta listen to your body. And when you listen to your body, you, it works. It all works. So I was really pleased about that. How about you? You have a good week? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jackie is once again out of town in, oh, wow. Utah, now, in Utah now for work. So I am yeah. solo, uh, you know, for the next Holding several down days. The yep. So it's just me and Jackson. And uh, yeah. Awesome. Just a, just another week. So your your hips, your hips all better. Yeah, yeah. The hips, um, really. I mean, knock on wood, but I have to say, I feel strong. I feel good. And um, yeah, I'll talk about it in my picks of the week. But um, it was interesting how getting back on the bike and what I did. So I, I won't give away any spoiler alerts right now. Um, but I'll I'll talk about it in, in picks of the week. And um, yeah, back to normal. Back to normal. Well, folks, before we get started with the news, we always like to remind you how you can keep up to date with all of our content across all of our platforms. Every episode is released on our YouTube channel. So just hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner so that you never miss an episode. And also, if you prefer to listen to us in traditional podcast format, we are on all podcast platforms. Just search Pelo Buddy TV. Click subscribe, hit notifications so you never miss an episode, and please leave us a review. If you uh, enjoy the show or if you have any suggestions um, for how we can improve it or interviews, we love to hear your feedback. So let us know. Yeah, absolutely. And folks, we are on Facebook and Instagram. By this point, I think so many of you um, have joined and follow along with Pedal Buddy. I'm excited to announce that we made 50,000 followers this week on Instagram. So that was really, really exciting to see how many of you have jumped on and don't want to miss anything. So for those of you that aren't yet on those social media platforms, make sure that you search for Pedal Buddy and like follow us so that again, you um, get all the latest news so i guess john let's just get on with the show the show first let's do a rundown of the latest pillow news So this past week, Peloton officially announced a new corporate wellness program, allowing companies to promote and provide access to Peloton um, for their employees. Um, through this program, companies will be able to offer their employees discounted and subsidized access to either Peloton Digital or full Peloton memberships, as well as special offers on Peloton bikes. Our understanding is that a few companies, including Accenture, NASDAQ, Sky, Samsung, and SAP, have actually already been trying out the program. So Peloton's president, William Lynch, said um, in a press release, um, this the statement, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to quote it, um, introducing Peloton's corporate wellness is the latest step in making the award-winning Peloton experience more accessible. 
Um, over, the, over the years, we've worked hard to help members achieve healthier and happier lifestyles. Peloton Corporate Wellness is the natural extension for us to be able to scale that offering. Together with our Corpus Wellness partners, we're now able to share the experience with millions more while also driving stronger culture and community within the workplace. So um, I think it's fantastic. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for companies to showcase what we all are so, you know, unbelievably um, uh, uh, into, which is Peloton and the platform. And this just allows some folks that may not have had the opportunity to join the cult um, to now become cult members. So i um, excited to see where that, where that goes. Um, and, and those companies, I'm sure, will see so many more. Um, and then, folks, um, HIHF, there it goes, John. I had to throw it in there. <laughs> but um, could we be the first to tell you that there may be another coach rumor to share? Um, there has been speculation that Susie Chan could be the UK's first tread coach. So watch this space for more. We don't have much, but we did want to kind of throw it out there. And um, I just think that Chris Lewis wanted me to be able to say HIHF. So there you go. <laughs> Wait for it. Yeah, could be exciting. Which, which John, truly, it really is exciting because we haven't seen anything about any trade coaches in the UK. Um, everyone's yeah. holding out to see if Ben, you know, if Ben will be one of the trade coaches, um, whether they'll give Leanne something different yeah, to do. Yeah, will wear um, two hats. Exactly, exactly. So that'll be, that'll be exciting. Well, another, another tidbit I know Chris Lewis will be vilified for is Bloomberg has just recently confirmed all of Pello Buddy's initial reports on this um, heartband monitor that Peloton is reportedly in the advanced stages of testing a new wearable device, very similar to like a Scotia Rhythm heart monitor that you can wear on your forearm or just above um, your elbow. Um, so they basically confirmed all the reports, all the details about it that we had initially um, mentioned. Um, it could have a small little LED display that has some information on it, um, how it will also integrate more effectively with the, the recently added Strive score to the heart rate information on the, the bike and tread. As Bob, as our Colleague Bob Tremore had previously reported earlier this year, Peloton was looking to hire contract designers with experience in low resolution displays. So that could directly be related to this wearable and that little LED display we had, um, I had mentioned. So yeah, see, I felt very, uh, I felt very out. in the know. Yeah. You know, John, I felt very in the know though, because somebody just asked me about what heart rate monitor I used. And um, it was funny because I said, look, I just have my Apple watch. That's all I use. But they were asking about the Scotchy and I had mentioned that you used it. And I said, but hang on, yeah. Pello, Buddy, Pello Buddy had reported that there may be something coming out. So it was really cool that I knew that Bloomberg had now officially um, mentioned it. Really cool. And I would get it. Uh, I mean, the Scotia is great, but I would get it just to see how well it works since it's Peloton, you know, how well, if right. it integrates better, if there's something different about it. Yeah, yeah. But I like, I like wearing it just above the, uh, the elbow. I, I, I never liked using the current Peloton heart rate monitor where you have to wear it around your waist or your chest. Got yeah, it. Not, yeah, so we'll not see. My, not my thing. So um, Robin Arzon's first masterclass is now available to uh, to rent or purchase from Masterclass in the, the, the video. It's broken down into little sections or chapters you can go directly to if you want. Um, it's described as from litigator to ultra marathoner to best-selling author to head instructor and VP at Peloton, Robin Arzon keeps proving it's never too late to level up in your life. Now she's ready to teach you how building your mental strength can help you see what's possible for yourself and see it through. Learn how to identify your dreams and apply the principles of endurance, power, and strength to help you reach your goals. So if you want to check out uh, Robin, Masterclass is always doing deals. So you can get like a you know, two for one or something like that. So definitely interesting to, uh, 
to maybe check that out. Yeah, and have we seen her on the schedule? I know we reported last week that there was um, some hints of her being back. Have you seen her on the schedule yet to be back? I haven't seen her on the schedule. I don't hear the control room chiming in, but she did kind of tease in her most recent Insta post. She was all dressed up like she was getting ready to teach or had just taught. Got and it. she said, I think she just said in the caption, guess who's back, back again. So it sounds awesome. like she was recording something at least, some coach awesome. to camera or maybe something for 4th of July. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be great. I know that everyone's anxious to get her back on the platform and get her back um, in the workouts and, and add her to their um, repertoires of uh, workout regimes. So yeah. um, that'll be exciting. That'll be exciting. Well, a few very lucky members, John, um, received a treat in the mail this past week. Um, I wasn't one of them. <laughs> but um, Peloton were mailing out packages to a few folks who took part in the Asian and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Um, the packages called Flourish, the Flourish packages, um, similar to the ones that were actually sent out for homecoming, included um, a, a bevy of things, um, interesting things, actually. They had um, three hair scrunchies. And funny enough, I use those hair scrunchies all the time. I love them. Um, so they included mm. three hair scrunchies. There was some tea, um, a sticker and a planner. Um, all these articles were from small businesses that were owned by Asian and Pacific Islanders. So um, that was really fun to see. And people had been posting it on social media. Um, so, yeah, I didn't receive it, but I, I did reach out to one of the girls that I do follow and said, hey, how did you get that? And she goes, well, I did take quite a few of the Asian Pacific Islander um, classes. So I don't know if there was a number that they were looking for as to how many classes they wanted somebody to have taken. Um, but very cool. And I like that. I like that concept that, you know, folks were being rewarded for doing something, you know, that they promoted, they promoted on the, um, on the, on the platform. Um, probably my most excited thing I am reporting this week, John, which is a silly thing, but it is that we saw a new feature that was added to the platform this week. Folks can now filter by warm up or cool down classes for the bike. And I have to tell you, um, a few months ago, I took an excerpt from Jen Sherman, your girl, Jen Sherman, um, about the importance of warm up and cool down rides. And I'm a huge believer in doing a warm up and a cool down. And I don't care what any of anybody says, count them, don't count them. I, you know, every ride's a milestone. But um, it has definitely made a huge difference to my workouts and just being able to, you know, put as much effort into my main ride, if you will, if you will. But now yeah. you can actually filter that, which I love because before I did try and stick with 10 minute um, a, a warm up and cool downs. There aren't that many 10 minute warm ups. Most of them are five minutes, um, but there are a fair amount of 10 minute cool downs. But now you can actually filter them. So before you, I would just put in 10 minutes and it would bring up yeah, your climbs sense. it would bring up you know there would be other things low your impact. low impacts exactly yeah. whereas now um, it does actually give you so my goal I was going through them actually as I was preparing for the show and my goal is to try and get in all those 10 minute cool downs with all the different instructors so I tend to stick to my people um, but my goal is to try now that I can filter it that way be able to try all the different 10 you know all the different cool downs in there a couple 15 minute ones as well not many uh, a couple 15 minute ones as well so that was a cool new feature I really like that so for those of you that weren't aware hopefully we've just taught you something new very nice well we have some new mood classes that recently dropped if you haven't checked out that series um, there's like a happy a sad a calm confident heated um, different content so there's recently a yoga flow uh, a mood core um, a couple different rides uh, that just recently dropped. They're all they all went on demand. There was no live content, at least so far, from this series. Uh, but you can go on the Peloton app or on the bike or just go on Pelo Buddy to uh, see the full breakdown. One thing I will also want to point out, thanks to the control room, is there is a mood ride by German instructor Eric Jaeger that's in English. So. 
he has not put out a lot of English content, at least as of late. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing to note. So I would, um, I would check that out because I haven't ridden with him in a long time, let alone an English ride. Right. That's awesome. So check that, check those out. And then we also have a new artist series announcement, Janelle Monet. Monea. Yeah, yeah, Monea. Monea. Yeah. Uh, Peloton had this to say, Afrofuturist funk, electro pop, hip hop. One word doesn't describe Janelle Monea's sound of fusion and vibrant expressions of identity. No matter what, she will make you move in her latest artist series. And we've got Yoga Flow with Chelsea Jackson Roberts. We've got a strength class with um, Chase Tucker. Those already have happened along also with a run that already took place with Maddie, 30 minute run. And then um, a ride that also took place with Emma on the 23rd, 30 minute Janelle Monea Peloton Pride class. Yeah. Um, yeah, folks. Well, there's more new apparel that has dropped. And um, I have to say, it's actually, this, is, this, this last drop was fantastic. Um, this week, we saw the Summer Team Peloton Collection. Um, and there were quite a few choices. Um, for the ladies, there's a fierce red workout set. Um, there's a unisex track pant and windbreaker set. Um, and probably my favorite is the Peloton pullover sweatshirt. Uh, it has all five countries printed on the back. So it was really mm. cool to see Australia. So it had UK, Canada, um, uh, US, sorry, US, UK, Canada, Germany, and then Australia on there. So I'm um, looking forward to receiving that. Yes, I bought it. Um, I mean, you know, you can never have too many sweatshirts. Um, there's also a pretty cool backpack, um, a crossbody bag, um, a new water bottle, a tumbler, and a baseball hat, um, amongst other clothing clothing items. Um, you know, John, it does seem though that the that these more frequent drops. Um, it, it is definitely easier for folks to get what they want from the apparel store and not feel like they have to, um, you know, rush to get on there and, and purchase just, you know, arbitrarily. And they yeah, can literally wait now and yeah, in a frenzy, they can now wait and, and see what they want because with there being so many, so many more drops and so many more things on the, um, on the website, um, you pretty much, you know, can go back and get what you need. So um, that's been fun. Definitely a couple things that I've um, gotten here or there. I, I modeled a couple this week on Instagram. I know you always tease me and, and how I have my selfies <laughs> in my new outfits. But, um, but, you know, it's so funny because there is no question that I'm getting that influencer status somewhere. I mean, three people went out and bought one of the outfits that I had on. So um, this is actually new go. too. This is new too from the um, this, um, Spiritual Gangster um, tea. So that's ah. um, that's a new one, new one as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for our instructor in the news segment, um, this past week, Sam Yo was mentioned in the Washington Post. Um, the article was titled Asian American masculinity is being increasingly celebrated, but many men still face stereotyping. Um, you know, guys, we've all seen the rise in anti-Asian bigotry um, of late. Um, some say due to the coronavirus origins being from China, um, but Asians definitely are feeling more persecuted um, lately. Um, for some Asian men, they see themselves as amb ambassadors for Asian athleticism. And um, in, in, as far as Sam goes, he was quoted to say, I am in someone's home every day. Um, as we know, Sam Yo, a 42-year-old popular Peloton instructor, um, is of Asian descent. Um, he went on to say, I know that the first Asian face that their child sees might be mine, and I am exercising. Yo said that one fan in California wrote, I love to work out with Sam because I see myself in him. It's insane because I've never met him, but I'm influencing um, his well-being. 
and Sam had gone on to say that. So um, really nice to see Sam being featured somewhere and Washington Post is my local newspaper. So that was fun to see a Peloton um, article in there. Um, but yeah, I was really pleased to see that this was something that was highlighted and focused. And of course, the article is extensive and has tons of different, you know, um, foot celebrities and, and well-known people um, being quoted in there. But a great article and good for Sam for speaking up and saying what he had to say. Well, in other Peloton instructor news, Peloton's Jess King um, was interviewed in an article on Pop Sugar. And she talked about her fiance, Sophia Urista. Uh, it's titled Her Love Has Healed Me in So Many Ways and talks all about the relationship, how Jess had um, just come out of a nasty breakup and then she decided she wanted to date women. And so she had approached Sophia at like a club where she was working and the timing was off. She was still with someone. Um, so they didn't actually sort of reconnect for a couple of years, but it talks about all about what their plans are because they're currently engaged, but they don't have a wedding date set. But they, they both want to um, have babies, carry babies, and then also adopt in addition to that. So it oh, sounds wow. like they have a, a pretty big family uh, plan mapped out. Um, but they also have their, uh, I don't know if it's weekly or monthly, this, this cooking show they like to do on yeah. Instagram. Uh is That's it so funny. Like, it's like you read hey, my Molly. thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You read my thoughts because I was just going to say I just saw the latest one and 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 Rob. Um, sorry, Jess's mom is adorable. Um, she's this, like tiny little thing, and there, you know, there is, is Jess and her partner, and they do an amazing weekly show. So I have mm. I have taken a look at that. It's very fun. Very fun. That's funny. Uh, yeah. And birthdays recent birthdays from last week so dennis i didn't know this because i i was only aware of dennis before i got the tread of peloton cycle you know cycle instructors but dennis and andy both share the same birthday so they both oh, had wow. their birthdays and selena samuela also just recently had her birthday so happy belated birthday to the three of them and yeah I don't know and that's whose what birthdays was... are coming up I wish I could mention. Yeah, I'm not anybody. sure. I'm not sure who's coming up either. But I do want to. I did want to mention. I'm not sure if you saw it, John. But Selena's group, Selena's squad, put together the most incredible compilation of well wishes from her squad, oh. um, which I was able to see. So one of one of my pedo friends is a big Selena. Um, you know, she works with Selena a lot, works out with Selena a lot. And they actually had members and, and I'm not sure who did it, but they compiled um, each little maybe two, three second happy birthday, Selena. You know, they gave their, their leaderboard name um, and they put together and, and there were clips of different, you know, Selena moments um, on there as well. It was about five or six minutes long and it was fantastic absolutely fantastic so um yeah so for those watching the show that are moderators or admins of different um groups a great idea you know to be able to and selena obviously promoted it on her page which was so lovely to see and she said she was just so you know heart warmed by what the community had done for her so they do really like that i remember back at leanne's birthday last year we did something similar um not in video form but we put together a book um, for her with yeah. everybody's pictures of, of our yes to you crew, which was fun. So, um, yeah, that is a, that is a nice, that is a nice thing. And, um, not, a, not a news article, John, but kind of to wrap up the news, which I thought was so lovely. Um, you know, we don't talk about Chase Tucker often, um, but something really cool that Chase did this past week in, um, uh, which I'm actually really excited about because we are going to get to interview this young lady. Um, she should be on the show in, in the coming weeks. But um, Lindsay Holt, who is a 17-year-old or turned 17, 17-year-old 17 Peloton community member, spent her birthday in New York this past week. And um, not only did she happen to run into um, Andy and Rebecca in Brooklyn, she also ran into Kendall, which was kind of cool. And interestingly enough, her and her mom were both wearing the same Kendall, Kendall and, and Lindsay's mom were both wearing the same t-shirts, which I thought was just so funny. And then she was standing in line to buy food and um, Chase, Tucker, Chase Tucker was standing in front of her and they started, you know, obviously she said, oh my goodness, you're Chase Tucker and I'm, you know, Lindsay Holt and spoke, etc. And Chase bought her her lunch. 
And she said it absolutely (laughs) made her day. And um, she posted that on social media. So um, I am really excited. I I did reach out to Lindsay and and she's agreed to come on the show. So we'll hear more about her adventures with the instructors and what she's done. But I really wanted to give Chase a a shout out because he is someone that I had not worked out with much. Um, He did come to the forefront recently um, with with some of the anti-Semitism stuff that had been going on and Chase was very vocal and did an Insta Live. Um, And I found a newfound um, respect and and admiration for him. So, and this was just another, you know, token of just what an amazing guy he is. So I did want to throw that out, um, that Chase clearly, you know, it was paying it forward and it was fabulous. So well, well done, Chase, for doing that. I really like that. I guess, um, I guess when I go back to visit family in New Jersey, I guess Brooklyn is the place to uh, people watch if I want to b- randomly bump into an instructor. You know, you know, John, it's funny that you say that because I, I, I'm sure you folks remember John and I spoke about this. We may, Maybe not on the show, but I had been in New York a few weeks ago and was walking through Soho and um, sitting on a step on her phone um, was Rebecca Kennedy. But we were all still masked up back then. Everybody had their masks on. And, you know, I walked past her and I thought it was her, but I wasn't sure it was her. And you were so lovely. And you reached out to her and said, hey, were you shopping in Soho? And she said, yeah, I was. And, and I reached out to her and said, it was me, John. You know, John asked because of me. And she goes, why the hell didn't you come and say hello? I love seeing community members. So, you know, you don't want to intrude on their privacy. And she obviously was, she was on the phone, so I wasn't going to bother her anyway. But my last trip to New York, oh my goodness, my husband was going insane because I literally was not looking at anything but hoping that I would bump into a Peloton instructor um, and, and wasn't fortunate enough. And here was, you know, sweet little Lindsay that saw, you know, four of them in a weekend. So, um, but you're right. I think Brooklyn is where I need to hang out um, in, order yeah. to, in order to get to see them. So, um, yeah, so I guess that wraps up the, um, the news segment. Um, Picks of the week, John. Let's see. Yeah, let's get right to them. Do you want to go first? I'm happy to go first. And I do have some this All week, right. folks. I do. So um, I know I get to tend to be boring, and I apologize for that. But I have to tell you, folks, Leanne's 20-minute 2000s pop ride from Tuesday the 22nd was epic. The playlist um, truly was one of the most fun. Um, And maybe because I was just getting back on the bike and excited to be back on, but she started the ride with um, Irreplaceable by Beyonce um, to Jennifer Lopez and J. Rule with I'm Real, Trouble with Pink. Ja Rule. Ja Rule. Um, Trouble with Pink. (laughs) Hollaback Girl with Gwen Stefani, Sorry by Madonna, and ended off with Usher and Burn. I mean, come on. It was truly the most, right? She says that. It was banger (laughs) after banger. (laughs) And uh, I actually put that on my my, my social media post because it it was amazing. It was amazing. But my week, um, so that is my absolute pick of the week. That is my absolute pick of the week. But my week started off, though, um, with Ben Aldis. So having taken a hiatus last week um, with my injury, I stayed off the bike for five days. And um, I have to tell you, folks, listen to your body. You know, I clearly couldn't ride even if I wanted to. I was in so much agony. I'm sure I mentioned it last week, but I had... um, pulled my um, my piriformis and my IT band um, and was in excruciating pain. And I really did listen to my body. I was, you know, took Advil, heat and ice. I rested up and was not on the bike. But Monday, um, I, I did jump back on. And I started off with Ben Aldis's, um latest low-impact ride. It was a 10-minute um, from Monday. It was from that morning. He had done it early that morning, so that was the 21st. Um, and you know what? It was the perfect ride to get to get started back on. So I did that as my warm up. I did that ten minute as my warm up. My third pick of the week was actually Leanne's new twenty minute beginner ride. And I do love to jump back to those, John. I, I do like to every now and again, if I have been off the bike or you know I'm, I'm just not feeling it, to jump on those beginner rides because it really does remind us 
what we should be doing not to hurt ourselves on the bike. Just how to sit on the bike properly, you know, how to manage your, your cadence and your resistance. So Leanne dropped a brand new 20 minute beginner ride um, that was also from the 21st, which I'm definitely giving. And for those that are new to the show and new to the Peloton platform, definitely start out with those beginner rides. I know that there is a whole um, series for beginner rides, um, and I, I hope that that one you know makes it makes it into it. Um, she also has a new cool down, um, which now you can filter with the new feature um, and a new post ride stretch. Um, have you stretched though? Now that is Hannah's catchy phrase. Hannah Corbin does use "Have you stretched though?" as her catchy phrase because she's a huge believer in stretching. But I definitely do do a post ride stretch after all of my stretches. And what I've started doing is I do my five minutes, um, and then I typically go to the floor and we'll do a ten or fifteen lower body. Especially after the injury, I want to just make sure um, you know that I'm I'm staying supple and um, and and stretching out those muscles. Um, so yeah, so those were a couple there. And then lastly, um, I have to throw in a meditation and this week it's Chelsea Jackson Roberts, um, 15 minute, uh, deep relaxation meditation. That was from Tuesday, um, the 22nd. Um, and Chelsea goes on to say that this is not meant to be a sleep meditation. Um, she does encourage um, you to, to lie down. So to, when you start the meditation, she does say um, that she'd prefer for you to be laying down when you're doing it. Um, but it is meant to reset your nervous system, recharge your body and release stress. And I can tell you that I have done it three or four times already. <laughs> um, and yep, that's the kind of week I've had. And I think it may be working. I, by the end of this week, I am feeling much more um, stress-free and relaxed. So I've told you folks before, I'm a huge, huge believer in the uh, meditations that um, are on there. I love them. I do them um, daily, sometimes twice a day. But that was my pick of the week was Chelsea Jackson Roberts' um, deep relaxation uh, meditation. So go ahead and look out for those. All right, John, up to you. All right. So I've got a few and nothing on the tread because I've been slacking. Um, I have not touched the tread in two weeks, but I will be on it soon. But yes, I've just been on the bike lately. So Cody, as soon as, Re as soon as Rebecca comes back, you'll be back on the tread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, like I'm, saying, time about that. I'm saying off the tread in solidarity, in solidarity as, to Rebecca. as Rebecca takes her time. Yes. So, uh, first up, I've got a 30 minute bike boot camp with Cody from Friday, June 18th. Just, just a, you know, a fun 30 minutes, Timberlake, Nelly Furtado, 50 cent. Alia, you know, great playlist. Oh, wow. yeah. And then uh, a great 45 minute Tuesday, um, just a classic rock ride with Jen Sherman, 45 minutes from June 21st. Uh, great for bed, Billy Joel, Boston. Um, she has Jackson Brown running on empty, which was my favorite track from that ride. Uh, and I think two Bruce tracks in there as well. So check out that one, 45 minutes, great one from Jen Sherman. And then a 20 minute house ride from Jess King that had me really feeling that bass, those bass drops um, from June 23rd. And then I just recently did uh, an artist series ride with Cody, which this is one of those rides I had no idea, just judging book by its cover, I had no idea what this was, but it's a 30 minute Casablanca records ride. So um, apparently there's all sorts of different artists on this record label, Casablanca records. People like Donna Summer, Village People, Britney Spears. Uh, it felt like a disco ride. It was a lot of fun. Um, and it just went down on June 22nd. Yeah, 30 minutes with Cody. So um, super fun. Yeah, just you, you could pass for a disco ride, like I said. Awesome. So I'm a little, awesome. I'm a little uh, narrow-minded, just all bike workouts. I got some boot camp in there for some strength. Yeah, you did. You did. All right. Yeah. Well, you'll get back on that. You'll get back on that tread. 
Um, you'll get back in that trend. I know. I I gotta, I, do, I gotta diversify. I really gotta yeah. diversify more strength. Right. And get getting all of that in. Yeah. Well, folks, we do have um, another interview for you this week. Um, we interviewed community member Stephanie Arana, and I had a lovely chat with her. Her story is so unbelievably inspirational and amazing. So stay tuned because coming up next is Stephanie Arana. <music> Let's get to know another person behind the leaderboard name in Pello Chats. And now, folks, it's time for Pello Chat. It's been a while since I've had a somebody on in a chat. Um, and I'm really, really pleased this week to welcome Stephanie Arana. Um, Stephanie is a community member that I happened upon on the official Facebook Peloton page. And I know we always talk about sometimes how negative the page can be, but I have to say this story is one that I was really anxious to share with everybody. Stephanie has an amazing story. And without further ado, let me bring on Stephanie. I, Stephanie, there you are. I see you there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if Chris just had me in the frame or you in the frame. <laughs> I'm here. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you so Thank much you. for taking the time to um, do this interview and to spend some time here with Pedal Buddy TV and have the opportunity for us to learn a little bit more about you. So it's exciting. Let's go for it. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I I am in upstate New York. Um, I found Peloton probably in 2019 but I was not a serious Peloton rider until I, after I had my daughter in last January. Um, All right. And so I got a pre-pandemic. So you did have it. Yes. You did have the bike pre-pandemic. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I, but I would ride really kind of yeah, into the community. Serious. <laughs> right. Um, right. Yeah, so tell, so tell us a little bit more about you. So you're you're upstate New York. How many kids do you have? Um, I have two. I have a two and a half year old son and a seventeen month old daughter. Wow! And wow! That's they amazing. keep life interesting. <laughs> I'm sure they do, and yet you still yeah. time find to work out. So how did, initially, how did you initially? How did you initially find out about Peloton? Um, I was researching um, for bikes. Um, I wanted to be able to work out at home because I was very self-conscious about going into the gyms. And I did like biking. So I was comparing some different brands and I happened upon it uh, because apparently when you Google that you're searching for something, all of a sudden all these ads get thrown at you. So um, I checked it out and it looked fun and interactive. Um, I liked the thought of having all the classes and the live choices um, just to keep it fresh. I felt in my mind I would probably stick with it, with that type of an atmosphere. And it was definitely a good choice. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so tell me, I mean, obviously the, the precipitous of us bringing you on the show is that you've had an incredible weight loss. So I want to hear a little bit more about that um, because that really is something that drew me. I mean, I know where near what you've been through, but those that watch the show regularly know my journey. I lost 65 pounds uh, and I do accredit a lot of it to the consistency with Peloton. This has been the longest I've ever been able to maintain my weight loss. Um, I was determined before I turned 50 that I would never be fat again. And we are I'm about to hit 52, and so far, so good. Awesome. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so tell me about your journey from your weight perspective. Yeah, um, so it's kind of a long one, so I'll try to keep it brief. But uh, I, I wasn't always overweight. I ended up in a relationship that was abusive, and I ate to control my emotions. I guess I was definitely an emotional eater. And that just kind of spiraled. And when that relationship ended in 2015, 
and then I met my current husband. Um, I obviously was trying to get back into shape, but it was a lot of yo-yo dieting and not really sticking with a plan very long. So it was successful. I'd lose a few, I'd gain it back, and it was just this terrible cycle. Um, and in 2016, we got married, and um, then a few months later, he got sent to South Korea for 13 months with the Army. And I continued to try and do some weight loss, even though I was emotional eating there, too. Um, and I did keto for a little while, and it was pretty successful. Um, and then when he got home, we were trying for a family. We were going through fertility treatments unsuccessfully. Um, we had a lot of loss, and I continued to emotionally eat. Um, finally, we found out in March of 2018 that we were expecting our son. And I did gain a lot of weight during that pregnancy. I didn't try to control the food too much. I just kind of ate whatever felt good. And then after he was born in December, um, a month later, I lost my gallbladder. So I couldn't do keto anymore. <laughs> so I had to go down the road of traditional dieting, and, you know, calorie deficit, that type of thing. And it, it was a lot longer of a process than I was wanting. Um, four months after he was born, we got the surprise, you're pregnant again on your own. And then our daughter was born January 1st, 2020, brought in the new year. Oh, and uh, definitely um, was a whirlwind. Um, but a couple weeks after she was born, I was like, okay, we're done having kids. Um, now it's time for me. So I got on the bike, and it was never for very long. It was like 20 minutes, 20 or maybe 30. Um, and I slowly built back up, and I started doing strength classes, yoga, um, all of it. And eventually, after a few months, I was going for 45 minutes. I was then on it every day. It was just this slow, gradual addiction. And uh, now I can't do less than an hour or two every day. I'm always on it. <laughs> it's insane. So it's yeah, just been a the most amazing story. crazy ride. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah I, go ahead. Go I ahead. started out at 330 pounds, um, and I am now 156. So oh, my I goodness, Stephanie, you are my hero. 73 or 74 pounds. Yeah. You are my hero. How tall are you? I'm 5'7". Amazing. So, and then uh, back in March, I had to have surgery to remove a lot of the loose skin. It was something I didn't really want to have to do, but I was having a lot of pain and different infections with my skin um, when I was working out and uh, when the weather would be warmer. And it was hard to deal with. And mentally too mm -hmm. so all right you've worked so hard to get to that yeah. you know achieve that goal and i can relate i can 100 percent relate because um my journey is so similar to you in having done the infertility and the emotional eating and the back and forth and i too um was in that situation where you know where the skin was just i hated it and i i did have i, I know we spoke about this but i did have my stomach done i had the stick the yeah. skin removed from my stomach um and so i get it i get where you because yeah, for me it was like a you, almost... you take lightly yeah it's, exactly i had no, to weigh it's, it's a... wanting to see loose skin versus scars and to me they both weren't beautiful but at least I was more functional without that being in the way. I can now, I have a better range of motion when I'm on my bike. When I got, when I first got back on my bike, six weeks after the surgery, I was like, oh my gosh, what a difference. And even the same doing yoga, all the strength workouts, it's just, it's not in your way anymore. Um, I had my stomach done and my arms, I had 10 pounds removed overall. Wow. of just loose skin and I still have a lot on my upper legs so long shorts and compression shorts for the win until I can get that done 
for sure, for sure. And I think once you, you know, once you've gotten to that point that you've put in all this effort, you know, you, you will never go back. You know, it becomes no, a way of life. Definitely. And I think one has to learn um, how to manage, um, mm -hmm. you know, what one's diet and, and, but I think the exercise, and I say that all the time, you know, we always say it's 80% what you put in your mouth and 20% mm -hmm. exercise. But there is no question that if you're not exercising, that makes a huge difference. And I, you know, yeah, and so. I, I have the exercise portion down, but I lost quite a bit on my own. And then I like hit this spot last year at the end of October where I just couldn't get the scale to move anymore and I was getting frustrated again. And then I started researching to get professional help. And I mean, there's no shame in that. Um, that's what they're there for. So 100%. I ended up hiring a nutritional coach and he got me down the last 54 pounds I needed. So it was fantastic and I'm still working with them. You know, now I'm just moving my goals and now going right. for more strength. I want to be able to accomplish a triathlon in the near future. I, I have goals are just different now. Right. And then yeah. I ended up becoming so passionate about it that I got my certification in nutrition and personal training. And, you know, maybe someday they'll let me be a, an instructor. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Stephanie, that is amazing. Well, who knows? Maybe they'll get to see the show and, um, you know, you and I can hit Peloton together. Right, in a beautiful world. <laughs> in a beautiful world. You know what? But if nothing else, you've done it for yourself. And, and you know what, Stephanie? You've done it for your kids. Absolutely. You've done it so and that you're there the to be this. Why? Right. You know, you're able to I've run taken around so with many them. different you're able quotes be... from the instructors and pasted them on my bathroom mirror, just different words of affirmation. And those things keep you going too. Yeah, 100%. So yeah, so tell us about what parts of the community you've actually been gravitated towards. I mean, is there a specific, you know, community that you find that you're closer to, that you've gotten involved in? I love the Boo Crew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right, a you're Cody a Cody, you're a Cody fan. girl. <laughs> and yes, I am. I, I'm, uh, got my XOXO shirts and, you know, we do the rides. But uh, I love that community because it's so diverse and accepting of everyone. And they give back to their community. And um, I mean, what's not to like about that? <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And from a friendship perspective, have you have you found that you've built your own community with friends that are, you know, at the same place as you? You know, have you been? I know you've been open recently about your weight loss journey, but was that something else that you shared? You know, in the Facebook community, that you found a group of people that you were able to be friends with? Yeah, and I, I mean, I've gotten a lot of friend requests and people that have said that they've been inspired and that that's the whole goal. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, even if my story gets one other person moving in that right direction and makes that decision has that aha moment, mm -hmm. then that's good for me. And I mm -hmm. love talking to people about it. It's, it's nice when people want to make a change for the better. I have some friends that I knew prior that have the Peloton as well. And it's, it's like this fun little community and you get competitive with each other and it's like hey are you getting on your bike i'm getting on mine i was riding with my friend right. earlier today, partner, and was like, oh, right? the same thought. That, right and that accountability person the, the person mm -hmm. that you that you know that you can be accountable to that's into it the same way that you're into it yeah. makes a big difference yeah it's definitely a cult just like people say <laughs> it sure is. It sure is. And I have to say, I mean, that is something that, and again, I don't want to make this about me, but I can relate to what you're telling me because that was something that I took away from the community was the ability to be able to inspire others and let others know. And for me, it's more was my age, the fact that I was hitting my 50s and nothing was going to stop me. You know, I'm in right. the best shape that I've ever been. I am the fittest and healthiest. And I love that. I love that I'm going to go into my second part of my century, the second half of my century, um, knowing that there's nothing will stop me. I'm not quite yeah, sure I'm ready I to turned... do a marathon. So I will be joining <laughs> you on that. But <laughs> Well, I turned 34 last month and oh, I feel better 
than I did when I was 20. <laughs> and uh, I've had numerous people tell me, you look at pictures back then, you look at pictures now, it's like you aged backwards. And it's like, that's what getting healthy does. Right, right. And it just becomes, and you know what? I will share this with you. There are going to be bumps in the road. You know, oh, there yeah, are going to be times where you turn around and say, you know, screw this. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to be able to eat whatever I want to be able to eat. And, and there are times that you would be able to do that. And there are times that you figure out, you know what, this is more important. And, you know, I've always had, a, I'll share a quote that I've always used. Nothing tastes as good as thin feels. That's true. <laughs> and I'll even, I'll, I'll edit that and I'll just say not thin, but nothing tastes as good as healthy feels. Because 100%. you don't have to be thin yeah. to be healthy, but you have to Correct. be strong. And I wish, you know what, I, I'm listening to you and I'm processing it because truthfully, I need that reminder all the time because I've always used that word thin in my 50 years and trying to lose weight and the yo-yo dieting and whatever, but you're right. I'll, I'm 52, I'm going to be 52 years old. I don't care what I look like right now, but I know that I'm healthy. I know right. that I and can I think, unfortunately, work out, I can exercise. The health industry makes you feel that you have to be thin to be healthy. I mean, there's the whole BMI scale that is old and Hate outdated, it. but I followed it because I figured this is a good general rule to try. But when I know when I'm building strength, my weight's going to go back up a little bit and I need to not worry about that. That goes, oh, you're overweight. No, I'm just strong. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to tell you, you have blown me away even more. I just knew a small little bit about your story. <laughs> and um, it's folks like you that really make me stop because, you know what, you were just an upstate New York girl that found a way to, you know, make this her path and her change in life. And that's, and that's pretty phenomenal. So you have to be incredibly proud of yourself. Thank you. I try. I mean, I did it mostly for my kids because I want them to have something to look up to. Um, I'm very adamant. I know they're very young, but I don't let them have sugar or junk or anything like that. You know how kids like to eat anything, but mm -hmm. I, I am very stubborn with that. And they love their vegetables and they love their fruits. And that's how I would like to keep it. And if I get them on the right path now, then hopefully they'll make the right decisions later on. And hopefully now that I feel better about myself, they don't have to see mommy like hating on herself and they won't have those image issues um, or hate on themselves later on. And, and clearly, Stephanie, you've had a very supportive partner and that helps yeah. too. You know, having somebody does, that's your cheerleader on that bike for hours and I'm like, can you please just keep track of the kids <laughs> <laughs> on the weekends? Um, yeah, it's right. been a great help and it lets me well, focus good on for you. me too. Good for you. I mean, honestly, I am in awe. I am incredibly impressed with you and um, I really appreciate you taking the time to share your story with us here on the show. And I know that you're going to inspire others. I know that others will sit back and watch and say, hey, if she can do it, you know, we can do it. Um, Chris will definitely go ahead and put up some pics and we'll have you make sure that we can see some before and afters so folks Absolutely. can see the amazing job that you've done. Um, and I know that that's probably okay because you, you shared it on the Peloton page. But for those that haven't <laughs> Yeah, and I never would have shared pictures like that before, I'll tell you that. <laughs> isn't it the truth? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Steph, what we like to do is just to end of the show, we do something just fun. It's called okay. our um, 60 second descent and recovery. Oh, nice. And what it basically does is give me an opportunity to ask you a bunch of questions, uh, which will, you'll I'll rapid fire them off to you and uh, you'll answer. There's no right or wrong answer to it, but it's just something okay, fun good. we I like to study. do. And, <laughs> no, you no studying needed. No studying needed. So I'm going to go ahead and um, wait for our timer to come up. It just popped up. And um, if you're ready, let's go. All right. Bike or tread? Bike. But I want the tread. Favorite instructor? <laughs> Cody. High cadence or high resistance? Resistance. 
Early bird rider or night owl? Always early. Meditation or strength training? Strength. Live or on-demand classes? Live, but I end up doing on-demand. <laughs> First class you ever took? I don't remember it, but I know it was in the series um, for beginners. All right, awesome. And favorite class you've ever taken? Always the XO rides. <laughs> awesome. That was always Craziest for me. leaderboard name you've ever What's seen. That? Craziest, Craziest leaderboard name you've ever seen. Oh gosh, there's so many. Usually and the, time's the Viking. <laughs> oh. Go for it. Tell me. Yeah, I that was hear a hard now. one. That one I would have needed to study for. <laughs> we have heard some funny ones over, over the time have. that we've done this. And we some mildly have. inappropriate ones. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's too funny. I, um, I ride with, she's become actually a really good friend of mine now, but her leaderboard name is Bus Bitch Rides to Nowhere. <laughs> and, um, Le and, and we ride with Leanne Hainsby a lot and Leanne won't say bitch. She, she's a yeah. completely PG ride. And, yeah. um, and it's so funny cause she goes bus B <laughs> when she calls, when she does a shout out for her, it's become a joke now because we know that she's not going to say bus bitch, but yeah. she really won't say it. So, um, so that's, that's awesome. always my funniest bus bitch rides to nowhere. <laughs> So, um, most important question before we wrap up, what's your leaderboard name? You know, you're going to get a ton of followers from that. Yes. Uh, it's S Arana 87. Perfect. And Chris is going to pop it up on the screen and it's going to be right sure. there for everybody to see. Well, again, Stephanie, I, I just want to say thank you so, so much for taking the time, no sharing your st story, um, and coming on the show. Yes. It's awesome. All right, then. Well, folks, there you have it. Stephanie Arana, S. Arana. 87. 87. I love it. And <laughs> um, I will see you on the leaderboard. Sounds good. Yeah, John. So I guess, I mean, what an amazing story, hey? I mean, uh, yeah. I have to say. 178 pounds. It's an amazing feat. Amazing. You know, for someone like myself who is, has always struggled with my weight, um, I really could relate to her. I mean, I, I take my hat off. Thank God. I mean, thank God I didn't have to or deal what she had to, what she had to go through in losing that much weight, but she did it. She did it. And she is, you know, amazing. And you guys just heard her stories. So I have to say I was humbled and um, take my hat off to her. So it was nice. And, you know, that's what you guys had requested. You want to hear community members and what their stories are and how, you know, Peloton keeps them motivated and, um, you know, accountable. And that's something that I love about this platform and the ability to make friends, have something in common. People that don't have Pelotons call us a cult. We all know that. But um, there is something to say about it. Uh, who in a million, I mean, I've said this a million times and I'll say it again, never in a bazillion years would I have thought that I would have been excited about jumping back on the bike. And I literally woke up Monday morning and I felt, you know, I felt my leg, everything felt good. And I was excited to get out, to get to work out. And that's, that's something that I have to say. I, at 50, almost 52 years old, could never have said before. So, mm. you know, that was, you know, something that, is is definitely um to Peloton's credit to Peloton, yeah to Peloton's credit so folks with that being said we will definitely be bringing you more of those types of interviews um i know again that's what you guys are looking for and requesting so between john and myself we'll um we'll find interesting stories i mean stephanie's literally just popped up on the um the official peloton facebook page i saw her and and um i literally couldn't believe it i mean you saw the pictures there in the interview but i was like oh my word i'd love to get somebody like that on the show and we started chatting and that was pretty much how i got her on so you know if you have an amazing story whether it be an illness that you've overcome whether it be you know anything that you're willing to share with the community i know that people want to hear it so um reach out to us reach out to john or myself on on social media or certainly to Pelo Buddy on PeloBuddy.com on any of the Pelo Buddy social media platforms um, and let us know that you are interested in being interviewed and um, we'd love to have you on. So um, from me here in Maryland, folks, um, bye for now.
Yep. And from me here in Michigan, uh, thanks for watching or listening, and we will see you all on the leaderboard. Thank you for watching Pello Buddy TV, your source for everything Peloton. By the community, for the community. Work out with us using the Pello Buddy TV leaderboard tag and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Pello Buddy. Don't forget that we have a podcast available so that you can listen to us while on the move. Just search for Pello Buddy TV on any major platform and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.